warm welcome to all of you from um, all over the world. We have many countries represented here today. I'm really, really delighted um, to be speaking to you uh, today. Um, I'm, my name is Anne Lindstrand and I'm the unit head for the EPI program at WHO in Geneva. Um, and uh, I've been working with a, with a large number of um, collaborators around the world um, since the beginning of um, the COVID-19 vaccine uh, rollout to be able to support and make guidance and uh, in any possible way uh, increase the uh, possibility of uh, reaching uh, the most vulnerable with COVID-19 vaccines um, uh, over the last year. And in that, we've made a, a, a progress working together in a, a, a work that is called Innovation to Scale. Um, and here we come together with the propositions, possibilities, opportunities. Um, and we'll be speaking to you today about, about those. So next slide, please, Ben. Um, so today, the, the outline of our uh, hour together um, is, uh, and the objective of uh, today is really looking at the use case, the need and context for, global, for digital solutions and innovations uh, for COVID-19, and then looking at innovation priority areas for COVID-19 vaccine, uh, the funding opportunities, and, and actually exactly the application process and how you can access for your country uh, funding to, to take, um, uh, take on digital innovations uh, for COVID-19 vaccine and beyond by Gavi and by the Global Fund, uh, who are also very, very interested in, in the digital leap uh, that, that EPI programs can take around the world and maybe kickstarting with the COVID-19 vaccines, including um, digital solutions and innovations <clears throat> in the National Deployment and Vaccination Plan, the importance of, in, of putting this in the plans, and then some technical assistance and support and help if needed, um, a help desk called DICE, um, and then the, the, uh, the GIS working group for COVAX. I'm very delighted that I can see that uh, so many people from all over the world are now putting your name and where you're working um, in the chat. Um, a way to introduce ourselves. There are many people, I think there were 58 countries represented in the registration for the seminar. Um, so we won't have time to go around the, the, the webinar room and introduce ourselves. But if you do that in the chat, that would be lovely. Next slide. Um, so looking at the COVID-19 vaccine rollout so far, um, the, there has been a, a tremendous effort by all countries around the world um, to introduce this vaccines or these vaccines, since we have 17 different vaccines with different presentations in use at the moment. And there are 3.5 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines so far that has been administered in 250 countries. Only five countries have not yet started uh, however, the three of them are in the, in the making and doing the last preparation to roll out. So almost universally, uh, extraordinary uh, effort from EPI program and, and health systems in all countries across the world um, in a very, very short time. COVAX has shipped uh, 104 million, but we see a ramp up very soon with many, many more doses coming out through the COVAX facility. Next slide. Um, the worry we have is um, that there is a, a, a terrible, unacceptable inequity still between the access of the COVID-19 vaccines. You have 1.3 uh, doses administered per 100 population in low-income countries and 80 per 100 uh, population in high-income countries about a 60 time difference between the two. Next slide. Um, 
Oh, there we go. Now the, the camera works. Fantastic. Um, so the the uh, AMC 92, which is uh, the, the countries that are um, re receiving uh, uh, for free or heavily subsidized doses from COVAX, um, the, there is a, a tremendous uh, surge uh, in doses that will be coming at countries, to countries, to you, in, in the next six months. And particularly in Q4, the last three months of this year, uh, there, there is about an estimated 2 billion doses that are will be reaching the AMC in 91 countries. It's not only for from COVAX. COVAX is estimated to constitute about 47% of those, but then there are also the bilateral deals, AU, multilateral banks, and domestic supply. Uh, so if you look at the on the right, uh, the vaccines administered so far in those countries are about 129 million. And in Q4, the supply estimated is 1.9 billion. So it's a 15 times increased uptake that is needed in, or in order to uh, absorb all the doses coming in those uh, last couple of months. In order to do that, it's really important a country start to take actions now, start the planning, put operational funding in place, scale health workforce, and to be ready to be uh, sub, uh, sub, um, uh, take care and administer all these doses. Next slide. Um, so um, UNICEF and WHO uh, supporters have um, are, are, are with you uh, at country level, at, and many of you are here, um, regional level and global level, to be able to support this national planning and costing. So what we uh, encourage all countries to do right now is do a refresh of the national deployment and vaccination plan, or whatever plan you have. This is updated guidance for the NDDP that was posted on the WHO website and the links you can have here. Um, but whatever you call the plan, uh, it's really important to do this plan now. Every country has introduced uh, the, the vaccines. And now when the ramp up is coming, it's really time to relook at what are the ambitious uh, ambition of each country? Do you want to reach 20%, 40%, 60%? And what does it take to do that? Uh, the training sessions that need to be organized uh, will help you in the coming weeks um, to um, support this, this new um, up refreshed national deployment and vaccination plan. After that, we encourage all countries to upload this on the partners platform on the WHO website, because there we can match uh, costing or gaps in funding with the donors uh, and, and see to it that all countries have the resources they need, both in TA and technical assistance and in funding to be able to do this massive rollout. Next slide. <clears throat> and um, the funding that are coming along is actually substantial. It has in the first steps, and you know that very well in many countries, Funding has been a bottleneck to do the final rollout. So having the accessibility to the funding to the, uh, the um, operations at in countries, the operational cost. However, there are a lot of people uh, and funders, and you see many of them here, that have substantially committed funding to be able to roll out these vaccines. Not all of these funding is for the delivery, it's also for um, innovation, for health system strengthening, and for the COVID-19 vaccine delivery. Um, and we will be speaking about some of those donors today, Global Fund and Gavi, who have um, who really wants to invest in the country's uh, digital systems to be able to roll out the vaccines more efficiently. Next slide. Next slide. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so um, another another very big um, 
uh, uh, challenge uh, that we foresee right now with the supply now having been squeezed in the end of the year there will be this 15 times unprecedented volumes of vaccine coming to countries that will be uh, given in an uh, unusual uh, age group as you all know uh, and to be able to deliver this uh, not just the vaccinators but also the administrative staff, security, the logistics, there is a huge search need for su substantial increase in human resources. Um, and to be able to help the human resources, that's where the digital tool comes in. Next slide. And that's why the, we came together as a group in COVAX, uh, which is the um, ACT A arm of being able to support the delivery of COVID-19 vaccines rapidly and equitably, and in a group called the Innovation to Scale, uh, with a common view that uh, health systems will be severely stressed in their ability to plan, distribute, administer, and monitor vaccination campaigns. And what is needed, there are opportunities here for robust and ready to scale digital innovations uh, to efficiently and equitably Really deploy the COVID-19 vaccines under very tight time months. And um, digital health investment can lead to more equitable coverage of quality health services, including vaccines, through increased use of data and evidence. Next slide. The, the, um, this working group called the Innovation, to, yeah, sorry. Uh, and, and so when we came together, we really, and I've seen that in so many countries. Yesterday, Somalia was uh, presenting in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a seminar, I've heard South Sudan, many, many countries and all many countries in the, uh, um, in the Impaho were presenting about <clears throat> the, the digital leap that many have done during this COVID-19 vaccine rollout. I'm sure many of you have been involved in taking uh, digital innovations rapidly and using them in the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. But this group was also, and I can hear that is happening in other, in many countries now, really thinking beyond COVID and the pandemic and how these systems can support routine immunization for more effective, effective delivery, how to guide your, the actions of delivery of, COVID, of routine immunizations well beyond the COVID-19 vaccine pandemic. Next slide. <clears throat> So uh, these are just some of the collaborators across WHO, UNICEF, um, the SDG GAP, but we also have uh, strong collaborators in all of the, the global health funders, uh, and some of them will be speaking here today. Next slide. <clears throat> um, the first thing we did in this working group was really looking at what are the priority problems and areas that we hear the countries are facing in the delivery and where can we use innovations in a smart way to make the delivery more efficient. And here are the, the, the priority problems that uh, we know from routine immunization was already a problem before, but with the speed and scale, this has been even more acute during this crisis and the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. Microplanning, counterfeit detection, uh, vaccination status, uh, uh, vaccination monitoring, safety monitoring, routine immunization, real-time monitoring of campaign planning and health worker training. Um, next slides, I will be going into a few of these areas, not all of them. First, to start with the fantastic, yeah, you can have the next slide then, thank you. Um, so the first, the first um, innovation where there is one specific working group working on this, it's the, uh, the GIS-based digital microplanning. Um, so the challenge in COVID-19 vaccines is really the, the new population targets, the new supply logistic that, uh, requirements that are needed, particularly UCC for, uh, for some of the vaccines. And then <clears throat> current paper-based Microplans lead to inefficient deployment of resources, poor, poor accountability, missed uh, populations, and lengthy processes while using paper-based microplans. So the GIS mapping can 
uh, map the health facilities in catchment areas, use artificial intelligence products to characterize um, the population location, spatial analysis to identify gaps in accessibility in vaccination services, and, and really be able to identify and account for all target populations, uncover gaps in population where uh, and really finding those locations where maybe the delivery points are not there, helping the micro planning to see where are the populations and where do we need to distribute the vaccinations and do this rapidly, digitally, more in real time to guide the actions in itself. Uh, I, I think we all see the opportunities and, and polio program and MISA's campaign have been using these GIS opportunities for a long time. Um, uh, and, 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 and with very, very good results. Uh, next slide. I'll come back to GIS in the end of the seminar. Uh, next slide. Um, you have the counterfeit and uh, falsified detection. So uh, there, uh, the, the, the problem here is the um, unfortunate uh, people who are criminal and who try to falsify this. There has already, during the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, been a few occasions where Interpol or other police um, efforts have been able to stop uh, criminal leaks doing the falsified vaccines. This is really serious. Falsified and harmful vaccines may contribute to the loss in trust and vaccine hesitancy, but there are opportunities. So there are barcodes on <clears throat> secondary packaging on not all vaccines, but some vaccines. And the idea is where in the future, we would want this to move even to the primary packages to be able to track and trace, but also to be able to see which are the falsified uh, um, counterfeit uh, um, products uh, that needs to be stopped. Um, the, the idea here is what we're working on, trying to establish a global trust repository where countries can uh, map out with the barcodes, the different batches very easily, quickly, and then it could be saved in a global traceability database at a global level, uh, uh, where we would be able to uh, control contract and, and check if batch numbers have been used too many, if it's uh, something that is, is not right with the, 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 the data. There has been uh, done this in the European region. We need to do this globally as well. Next slide. Um, um, vaccine monitoring, um, I don't need to, this is a dashboard from Bangladesh. I know many of you have been uh, very instrumental in actually doing this while the COVID-19 vaccine has been rolled out. So the electronic register for um, of all the total vaccines administered, mobile apps with offline capabilities to register each encounter with clients being vaccinated. And here you could then follow uh, where the vaccines are being uptake uh, in an efficient way and be able to act real time about what is not going right. Track rates of missed appointments, loss of follow-up, et cetera. So this is a real uh, opportunity, not just for COVID-19 vaccines, but also for the childhood routine immunization. Next slide. Um, and then also the campaign monitoring that has been uh, used in, in many places uh, for measles campaign and polio campaign, et cetera. The, um, the, the real time and with the maybe um, SMS uh, uh, reminders and information, control and, and, and contact between the different teams, digital data collection tool to, for, with protocols to help detect and remedy issues as they occur. Next slide. And uh, finally, um, the safe safety monitoring, which is crucial at this point in time with many new vaccines, all countries need to report so that we can collect enough data to really see um, and follow up the post licensing safety signals that are emerging um, as we speak. Next slide. A smart card certificate, we have the yellow card, as you know, but they are lost for quality, difficult to access, people lose them. 
Uh, so this is the real opportunity now to share the architecture to verify vaccination status of individuals digitally. Um, this uh, has been a, a, a big effort by WHO and all partners to be able to move this to the digital space. And very soon the final, uh, uh, the final uh, uh, modalities of this will be rolled out uh, so that there will be an interoperability across the world on this. The IHR committee discussed this last week, and I think this is where we're moving. Next slide. Finally, um, now I would like to uh, move over, um, and I have my colleagues from, um, from Gavi and from uh, the Global Funds uh, who can, um, you know, make the case um, that there are funding for this in countries. So country colleagues, please uh, over to Karine Gachon first, um, um, if you're online. Oh. Uh, and Karine okay. hasn't been able to join yet. So perhaps we can okay. move through this and come back to it if she, if she joins us in a bit. Well, actually, I, I think I can I can speak to the slide because I know very well I've been working with the, with Gavi on these funding opportunities. So I, I don't mind going through the slides then. So let's just even better. This is one of the key things that you know it's not only having the opportunities, right, um, and the willingness and the demand is there. I can see the creativity is bubbling in all countries actually to move towards digital. I think um, healthcare workers. Um, uh, are, are around the world are really, really ready for this. It needs to be done mindfully. But one of the gaps uh, that has hindered a part is the funding possibility. Um, and so, uh, Gavi, uh, next slide. Um, the, the, there has been um, an investment you know, in COVID-19 vaccine rollout it is an opportunity and, and not just to do it now, but to do it beyond. And I, I'm sure you see the, the attention at the moment on vaccines and the funding that is coming to health systems right now can really be crucial for even investing for the future in, in, in health systems. You, and their health workforce, health, human resource search, training and deployment can also be a, a good investment. The vaccine and safety monitoring, the cold chain equipments will last beyond the COVID-19 vaccine delivery. Uh, so, um, and take, I, I really, uh, I mean, right now there are windows open and opportunities for funding that I hope that uh, the country colleagues um, across the world take advantage of. So next slide. Um, now, Gavi has uh, the Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, um, are working uh, within COVAX, of course, and, and are crucial in the fundraising for the support of the vaccines and procurement of the vaccines. However, um, there has also been a very strong support also for delivery. Um, and so at the moment, right now, there is a uh, a, a big amount of funding that will be accessible with a, um, a certain cap for each of the countries in the AMC 92. It's called the Gavi CDS Early Access. CDS stands for um, COVAX Delivery Support. And the Gavi board who proved this two weeks ago, three weeks ago, really wanted it to be a simplified, fast, flexible now funding uh, for the support of the delivery and getting the doses out. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 the only thing that uh, the countries uh, you need to do is get onto the COVID-19 partners platform. I'll come back to that. Um, and the funding is open now. It's July and it's August. So up to the end of August, you can use this simplified request. It's really simple. It's two pages. Um, and it needs to be signed by the Minister of Health or any delegated authority, and then submitted on the WHO Partners platform. Um, and 
the, the, there will be also, after this early access, there is an additional funding window available for the AMC countries and from August 2021, and it will be possible to, um, uh, that they will, you, you will also be able to uh, access these funds up to the end of December. Uh, so first now, accessible until the end of August, then there is a second window being opened. Um, and we're talking about in total 650 million US dollars that will be rolled out in support of COVID-19 vaccine delivery. Um, and how does this funding then support innovation? Why do we bring it up here? Well, it's because uh, uh, Gavi has a long time had um, a, a very big appetite for investments in innovations, different innovations. So in this applications, the two windows, Gavi is encouraging to invest at least 15% of these funding requests to scale up innovations that support COVID-19 vaccine delivery. It could be operational costs. It can also be technical assistance. What do you need? What is needed to be, to be able to, to take that digital leap? Um, so uh, Gavi uh, in, in defines innovation broader, maybe broader than I've been speaking today. It's about use of different practices, products, trainings, wastage, many different areas that could be included in innovations, not just the digital ones that we uh, are talking about today. But there are two principles here, the government ownership. So really, um, the government in the driver's seat being able to look at the specific country challenges, what is already there, the culture, the capacities, and already in, in existing innovations in the, in the countries that may need to be adapted to the delivery of so, support. Um, and then uh, the, it's really, really about building on what is there and what has already been proven effective in the country. It's not about inventing new systems left and right. There is a lot of knowledge about in Digital Square and, and places which I'll come to uh, where uh, knowledge um, uh, has accumulated about the best practices here. Next slide. Um, and so uh, in the NDVP, um, the National Deployment and Vaccination Plan, in the new uh, guidance 2.0, to help you in the planning, the, you see on the left hand all the chapters of the NDVP, but in each of the different uh, chapters, there are innovative interventions that can be accessed through the COVID-19, uh, the Gavi CDS funding. So if you just look through the, the, uh, the new guidance, and uh, that can be accessible on WHO website, here are some of the ideas. Uh, it's all, of course, all up to uh, the country's wants and needs and Etc. But here it could be a, a, a mental health or a health that could be uh, helping you into making that first uh, two pager of the support for um, the COVID-19 vaccine delivery. I'm not saying that all of the windows should be in innovations. You, you of course need the delivery funding for many other things. But here the 15% um, could be, should be, can be used for innovation. Next slide. Um, and uh, Benjamin, is is Nicholas on online right now? No, he hasn't been able to join. So if you could take this one or, or okay. pass it back, let me know. Um, yes, uh, I can. I can. Do you, do you? Can you? Do you want to take this? No, I think better for you if that's possible. <laughs> Okay, so Global Fund um, has also a very big appetite for um, for support. Uh, they have, have uh, resource mobilized for the, the uh, support in, 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 in health system investments, of course, benefiting HIV, TB, malaria, and health systems as well. However, as well, uh, windows of fast track the introduction of, of other things that could be used during the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. And particularly, uh, they have a funding window allocated um, up to 15% of their total global fund grant allocation can be used um, 
uh, for, for, uh, for, for this fast track and be able to reprogram safe savings and funds. Um, here is the website where all the guidelines for the global fund um, funding uh, is accessible. So I also encourage all of you to take a look at this because this is another place where um, the delivery funding can be accessed. Next slide. And over to you, Benjamin. Thanks, Anne. Um, and thanks, colleagues, for, for joining today. Um, I've got uh, the pleasure of taking you through uh, the technical assistance resources that might be available. I don't think it's a coincidence that one of the first questions that we had in the Q&A was, how do I get help to do all this? Um, quite a lot of us, uh, obviously, in this response have been really thinking about what that means. And, and thinking through and trying to anticipate some of the areas where the introduction and delivery of COVID-19 vaccines will be bringing challenges and, and where we can align around approaches and digital solutions that can support governments to roll out the vaccine more equitably and efficiently. And so what we discovered though was when we started having these consultations at the country level, even though some of these approaches that, that Anne's touched on already exist and, and digital solutions are there to meet some of these rising challenges, there's a big gap between what's needed to design and, and deploy these solutions. And there isn't necessarily capacity in every country to be able to fully take on these guidelines and operational support to come to a point where uh, countries and, and stakeholders can ask for support from donors and others when they need to deploy these solutions. So DICE, the Digital Health Center of Excellence, is, is kind of uh, uh, come out of that process. And I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview of exactly what DICE is, uh, some of the principles within it operates, um, what the kind of resources and, and strategy is for engaging DICE with support, and then finish up with some of the contacts you can reach out to and that kind of thing. So first of all, DICE is a, is a multi-agency consortium and it's, uh, while it's led by UNICEF and WHO in a co-hosted secretariat, there is um, UNICEF kind of running the day-to-day -day activities and managing funding for operations. Um, it also provides coordinated and, and standardized support to governments. And it, it, initially it's responding to those support requests for the preparation and deployments of mature digital technologies. So those things that we know are already working and really there to support the health and service delivery in the context of this COVID-19 pandemic. DICE aligns with donor agencies. And I think we've just kind of heard about what that means in terms of real world funding and opportunities. And it supports governments to identify and, and apply for that funding and kind of guide through that process, building kind of the cost of investment cases that are needed to justify those investments. We operate uh, DICE within um, a number of principles. And that means that the partners that we're working with, the stakeholders that are involved, are there to kind of deploy robust, mature, and easily scalable digital solutions. Um, again, we'll come to some of the Q&A, but I saw some questions already coming in. Would encourage you to add more. We'll, we'll reserve some time at the end here to respond to those. But one of the questions coming in was actually talking about this. Is now the time for innovation? And we know from kind of previous emergency responses that the investment should really be in, in those robust and mature scalable solutions and innovations that we know have worked perhaps in one context and might scale elsewhere. So within those principles, we, we're always demand driven. And that means prioritizing country support that aligns directly with the NDVPs. And you just saw in a, a couple of slides ago from Man exactly where those entry points are in the NDVPs. And I, I guess just thinking a bit beyond that, sometimes we need to be really agile in this. Um, it is a fast moving response. We're seeing ebbs and flows in the support requests and the specificity of what they're asking for is evolving as well based on the immediate needs of countries. Uh, we've seen in the last month or two, for example, huge demand for scheduling systems as we kind of grapple with the mass uh, vaccinations that are happening, how do we coordinate that? So we wanna be able to establish those contracting mechanisms, not get held up, try and 
go through some of the operational processes as quickly as possible and have access to a bank of technical ex experts to allow for rapid response, uh, depending on the needs. A another core principle is really supporting governance, governments to use existing systems and resources. We know that if we come in with new solutions, they have to be adequately costed and resourced and the various cost drivers well understood to make sure that whatever solutions are uh, applied, that they're sustainable. And that usually means integrating into existing health management information ecosystems and ensuring full interoperability and really building upon what's already there more often than not. Um, another core principle to everything we do and is safe Safeguarding. We know there's some incredibly sensitive data that we're often dealing with. So we make sure that we apply the global principles of digital development and only endorse platforms and digital solutions that have acceptably demonstrated that they kind of meet those high standards that we have, both at the individual personal identifiable information level and patient privacy, but also from a cyber security perspective as well. Lastly, uh, we, we run by a principle of capacity building. So DICE is there to provide guidance and technical assistance to governments on digital health investments, including vendor selection, platform, setup, training and maintenance. But it's not designed to supplant any of those existing systems. It's very much there to complement and augment where needed, given the surge of support needs. Who supports DICE? Uh, I I mentioned the kind of co-hosted secretariat with UNICEF and WHO, which is kind of at the core there, but we have a number of participating organizations. So this includes GIZ, USAID, Digital Square, BMGF and Gabby, and they're providing some of the core funding to functions of uh, the Digital Health Center of Excellence. Then if we take that out a bit more, we've got endorsing organizations. Uh, they provide kind of the indirect DICE funding, sometimes direct country funding through the existing mechanisms, and that extends to staff, staff secondments. Right now, that's the UK's Foreign and Commonwealth Office, the World Bank, uh, the European Commission and the CDC, not to forget the Global Fund up the top there. And lastly, the support we're getting from private sector partners has just been uh, astounding. The, the response that they're giving, the response to some of the funding requests has been extremely positive. And they're coming through not just with core funding of, of, of some of the functions that we have, but also the direct support to countries and importantly also in-kind support from some of that uh, direct expertise from the private sector. What areas can DICE support? So what is it that DICE can offer you? You've probably been listening to some of these amazing solutions that have been presented. What is it that the Digital Health Centre of Excellency can excellence can provide, it coordinates a lot of the kind of needs between donors and development partners at both the regional and the global level, and then uh, helps inform those things. So it's kind of an interlocutor between those various verticals and can help kind of navigate the, that world. On a practical level, that means often reviewing concept notes, terms of references, making sure they align with some of those frameworks that are expected from donors and, and other implementers. So that uh, guidance and support includes, uh, we, we do a lot of work at the moment, kind of looking at different assessment tools, making sure that they're, they're aligned with kind of the COVID-19 responses and then support the implementation of those things. So understanding where those gaps are, understanding the enabling environment of what it takes to be successful in the digital space. Um, Something dear to my heart is uh, investing in digital public goods or digital global goods, as we often refer to them in the health domain. And they're kind of strategic investments in common building blocks that can help uh, share uh, investments in common digital public goods needed to respond to digital health. Uh, DHIS2 is kind of a, a commonly um, given a digital global good that we see deployed in many different countries. And it means that you can build on those investments and share them. So um, we're also providing recommendations and support in contracting technical experts. So that means kind of operationalizing a, a roster, so kind of quickly deploying those technical experts and indeed going through some of the long-term arrangements and other procurement aspects that are needed to aid in working with institutional contracts and, and, and implementing partners. 
Lastly, we support the capacity building, training, and knowledge exchange. So increasingly, you'll see opportunities for e-learning and, and some of the other materials and knowledge management that are coming out of the DICE. Um, so lastly, we've got uh, how can you uh, get in touch with DICE? And I think um, while we're working on some of those knowledge management products, the, the website should be up and running shortly. Right now, the easiest way to request support is to send an email. And it's up on the screen there. We'll obviously be sharing the presentation after this with all attendees, but that's how you can get in touch with uh, DICE today. Send an email to contact at digitalhealthcoe.org. Support requests should be uh, from or endorsed by government and have been going through existing technical donor and coordinating mechanisms. We've kind of seen that in the last couple of slides, the NDVPs, the opportunities around C19RM and, and Gabby and other existing assistance mechanisms. And support is provided through those existing regional and country structures. I sit in UNICEF's regional office, so I work and I complement, uh, DICE complements uh, the work I do. And that's exactly how it's designed, is to complement and augment existing structures, not come in and supplant them. It's really a surge support function. Um, so I'll hand back to Anne now if you want to take us through the WHO and UNICEF GIS working group. Back to you, Anne. Actually, we have um, Ravi online. So if you can give Ravi Shankar the name, uh, he's leading this group. Uh, and I think it would be better if he is given a minute to present all the good work there. Uh, if he can go to the next slide and if you can get Ravi Shankar to, um, uh, to get access to present. Can you do that, Ben? Yeah, I think you're with us now, Ravi. Let us know. Yes, Ben, thank you. Uh, all right. Next slide. Excellent. So the next slide. The <clears throat> GIS working group started in last this february actually uh, this is one of the innovation as Anne mentioned and um, uh, roku panisara leads the uh, initiative from the unicef side and we also have co-partners we meet regularly every week uh, with world bank gavi global fund cdc and unicef and who so what is the uh, gs working group doing actually gs working group is trying to assess the requirements or the needs at the country level. That's the first step um, we started to doing. So we had a rapid country assessment survey, which we had circulated to many countries. Feel free to uh, request us. We will, we will uh, circulate the links and the, and the slides at the end of the uh, presentation. So you could also, you know, we encourage countries to take this uh, uh, assessment because we wanted to know where, where does the country stay in terms of this digital innovation? Does the country have already access to satellite imagery? Are the all health facilities mapped? Are the health catchment boundaries mapped? Do we have a spatial population already available in the country? So we are asking these basic requirements or the basic assessment, doing a basic assessment from the country. Then uh, there was also a question uh, here uh, asked, have we already pre-vetted these vendors or so? So that is the technical portfolio of the uh, of the vendors. So we have you know, uh, identified up to 50 vendors who are operating in different parts of the world and did a benchmark of them. Uh, I don't know if it is a pre-vetting. It's, uh, it's like we, we brought them into a standardized workflow, asking them various questions and put them in a standard slide format. So we have like uh, two slides for every vendor so that the country can quickly browse through them and understand, okay, this is the capacity of this vendor. He has already operated in my, my country. He had already have a technical agreement with us and this is a strength. So that sort of um, work is done on the uh, technical portfolio for the vendors. Then we also had prepared some um, technical note for the C19RM on how the country could actually apply for a uh, funding grant. So of course, um, you know, with so many work and busyness in the country, it always looks uh, so complicated to complete these application forms. So we did an information note on that. A small paragraph on the GIS innovation could be included into your normal CRM application form with a price tag next to it. We have done a, um, a budget tool, um, Excel budget tool, which is very user friendly for the countries to put certain criteria and get the amount which uh, might be uh, needed for the country. So 
we are guiding on that part and then also we are preparing a, 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 a playbook which is which is like step a to step z of digital micro plan in the field if as a country i want to uh, to uh, do uh, start doing a digital micro plan where do i start all my checklist all my procedures on how to actually implement a digital micro plan on various stages so this is what you know, we are trying to do i should tell you that from the uh, global fund uh, grant up to 10 countries have already requested they are in the final stages of clearance from 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 uh, the global fund authorities so global fund is very supportive as well as gavi the gavi fund is open now and um, i know uh, and mentioned already they are very very supportive to go up to 15% on the total budget for innovation and gis is one of the innovation there and country can definitely request on that what they can request support is to map their health facilities to get a spatial population satellite imagery building footprints health catchment boundaries drive time analysis to to understand which is the nearest health facility which provides this um, uh, access to uh, the vaccination so there is a reach beyond beyond this uh, uh, short term of covid gavi and unicef and who and global fund looks beyond the the existing covid thing so that this can help the routine immunization this can help all other programs within the country thank you and thank you so um last last and final slide benjamin i get a lot of um um information so here you can um seek help of uh, some of our professionals maybe some of you are online the email of the of dice and then also who and unicef country office staff that are innovation experts and could also support in accessing and, and thinking through um uh, the, the 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 choices that countries may have at the moment i get one question here that um uh, uh if if this is only funding for um, for countries, yes, it is. But I think researchers and academia, I see some online, can contribute by being collaborators or getting contact with DICE and see how they can then support that way as well. Next slide, I think that's the last. Um, Benjamin, right? Yeah, and we have some other webinars coming up in other languages, etc. cetera. Um, and I think that's the end of the of the uh, uh, of the of the presentation. So, uh, Benjamin, did you uh, get Håkan Björkman to get access to being able to present because he had some good country examples that he wanted to share from UNDP? Yeah, sure did. Håkan, if you want to come up mute, you're good to go. Thank you so much. I'm not able to turn my video on, but that's fine, I guess. Yes, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead anyway. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. and thank you for giving me the word. I feel most honored um, at the beginning of the discussion. And thank you for this excellent opportunity um, for discussing this important uh, issue of efficient uh, digital COVID vaccine distribution and beneficiary management systems. It is indeed extremely important um, to make sure that the vaccines are distributed quickly when they do arrive. And really thank UNICEF, WHO and Global Fund for all the work. I just wanted to, 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 to highlight this, uh, a few successful systems that are already in place in a few countries for, um, for digital vaccine um, um, distribution deployment. And the main one is the India. I think many of you, you know the system in India called EVIN and uh, on vaccine distribution and COIN on beneficiary tracking uh, that has been funded by, by Gavi and um, is, uh, is uh, seen, I think, by many as, as a gold standard in terms of the way it, uh, it, uh, it provides end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, um, uh, tracking of vaccines and then, of course, managing management of the beneficiaries. There's also Indonesia with the SMILE system, very nice name, also funded by, by Gavi. 
And then we have, you already mentioned Bangladesh, and we have also in Bhutan, the Bhutan vaccine system. And, um, and these are all supported by UNDP in very close coordination with WHO and, and, and UNICEF. And just to say that um, um, our approach, and I guess our lesson learned is uh, the first one is very obvious, is that these systems are government owned and led. And the second one is that uh, the importance of ensuring equitable access and that all uh, groups and uh, populations receive it, uh, given the, 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 the challenges with using digital tools uh, in some settings. And, um, and the emphasis uh, on not just the digital solution, actually that is not the most important, but it is actually the standard operating procedures of the distribution system that needs to be uh, strengthened and then translated into digital uh, uh, system. Um, and, and then of course, as you already mentioned, the tremendous uh, important importance of the human resources that need to use the system that need to be trained and um, and uh, and if those things are done in the right sequence as as has been done in india and indonesia and these other countries um, we we can have successful digital systems up and running uh, hopefully um, in time uh, for those countries that don't have them yet uh, thank you so much for this opportunity over Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hokan. The, um, the, it's good to have the country examples. And as you've seen uh, in the chat here, the government of India, the COWIN, you have a, a link there. Uh, it's been extraordinary to see as well. Uh, the, the creativity and the willingness uh, in face of a crisis uh, to take the digital leap that many have done. Uh, I just wanted to say, you can put your questions in the chat. Uh, Benjamin, do you see any hands up? Um, uh, we've got quite a long list in the Q&A, so probably best to start off with those. Um, okay. can, me, can you see those, Anne? Yes, I've tried actually one by one to answer them while they, I've seen them in the chat at the same time. Uh, so I think the majority are, are already answered. One that is really important is on what countries have access to the Gavi funding? Is it only the Gavi countries? And that's a no. It is the Gavi, the, the AMC 92, so the expanded also the 35 that are added to the portfolio when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine uh, beyond the regular Gavi countries. And um, so it is beyond, uh, which is really, really important. Of course, the global fund uh, funding goes beyond that as well. They're not only in the AMC, if I understand right. Um, I just wanted as well, to, can, I, can I just ask everyone, I see that we have a lot of country colleagues from UNICEF, from WHO and from PATH and other organizations here. We're going to make uh, available this presentation and we want this presentation to live beyond this hour. So when we send it to you, please use it, send it, give seminars, uh, bring it to your country counterparts and discuss, uh, you know, those that, you know, have thought about this, are interested. This is the opportunity to take when, uh, when, uh, when the funding is there. It's not always that, that we have this a window of opportunity and, and really the time uh, can be here, uh, here and now. Um, Benjamin, do you see any other questions that you want me to, to respond to, or you? We've got a, quite a few coming in through the Zoom question and answer feature. I think um, we're also approaching time. I think I've just launched a poll as well, and I can see quite a few people kind of coming in there. Would really appreciate if you can uh, take the opportunity to complete that poll. This is the first in a series of webinars, so we'll be able to feed this in uh, as they go. Um, I don't think we're going to have a chance to get through the many Q&A aspects. Uh, we've got two minutes to go, I think. So what we will commit to is making sure there's a written follow-up to those questions and answers, and we'll make sure they're compiled alongside the other four events that are planned and, and shared back to everybody. So we'll create a bit of a, a FAQ, so to speak, of, of what's captured in those Q&As. Um, 
but I'll hand back to Anne. I think uh, maybe rather than try and dip into them now, let's wrap things up and bring it to a close and we'll make sure we commit to getting them in writing back to attendees. Thanks. So um, today we have discussed the challenges around the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Many of you are deeply involved. We've looked at opportunities for the digital solutions for effective, um, effective uh, use of the vaccines as they come into countries. There is a surge coming of doses very soon. So there is a need to be able to plan accordingly and have the funding in place. But before the ramp up of doses, uh, there is now the windows of opportunity to be able to uh, access funding for the rollout of digital solutions from Gavi and from a global fund. Uh, and you have all the necessary information in these slides of how to access that funding. Um, and then finally, DICE as a possibility, a help desk for, uh, for countries to be able to choose between all the different already existing solutions out there and make sensible choices um, for the dig digital solutions for them. So, um, and, and one question in the chat was, is this only for COVID-19 vaccine? No, DICE is set up now during the crisis, but it's meant to live beyond and also be available for uh, long-term and for support of routine immunization. So great, thank you for all of you who've uh, uh, showed up today. And please let this presentation live uh, in all the countries represented here that are thinking about um, digital solutions for the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, but also for routine immunization to make them more efficient um, and to make use uh, to help us stop this pandemic um, um, that we are all living through. Thank you very much, everyone, for showing up.